morning, everybody. Welcome back to SBPL Storytime. My name is Mr. Matt. It is Tuesday. I hope you had an awesome Memorial Day yesterday. I hope you had a great time with your friends, with your family, with some awesome food. Of course, Memorial Day is the unofficial kickoff to summer, and we have some exciting news coming about our summer reading program, which we will announce next week. But stay tuned for that. It's going to be very exciting. But for today, we have some fun stories. We have Rhyme Time with Miss Jen. And of course, we have your challenges. Your challenge this weekend, this long weekend, was to spend some time with your family. Spend some quality time, take some pictures, send us one of the pictures of you hanging out with your family, your friends, celebrating this weekend. And you guys did, and guess what? Mr. Matt did too. So here are our pictures. Here are a couple pictures of a Han with his family. Looks like they're hanging out inside. And then they took their fun outside. Maybe they had a picnic, but they were enjoying themselves. Guys, I'm happy you had such a good time. And here's Maddie with her brother doing some gardening. Again, spending time outside. Guys, I'm happy you've enjoyed the beautiful weather this weekend. And there go Ashi and Atharv playing a board game with their mom and dad. What a great way to spend your time this weekend. And of course, my family and I also spent a lot of time outside this weekend. We went to a couple of our favorite parks, went hiking on some awesome trails, and took a lot of pictures as a family, of course. And we even saw this incredible looking waterfall. We had a lot of fun, just like you guys. It looks like you guys had a fantastic Memorial Day weekend. I am so happy to see that. You guys are so creative, and I know you're having a great time at home with your family. And I'm going to give you another chance to have fun with your family because you can do this scavenger hunt as a family. Yes, your next challenge is a scavenger hunt. Your challenge until Thursday is to find three things in your house that start with the letter L. Yes, the letter L. Find three things in your house that start with the letter L. Take a picture of yourself with those three things. Send it to the email address you see on your screen right now, and I will be sharing those on Thursday's story time. Of course, Miss Jen will be here tomorrow for baby story time, and we'll be back on Thursday for more stories and rhymes and a craft because Thursday is craft day. You know that. I'm ready for a story. Are you ready for a story? Well, let's do our opening song. On three. One, two, three. If you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, wiggle your ears, wiggle, 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 wiggle. If you're ready for a story, wiggle your ears, wiggle, 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 wiggle. Well, it's time for us to read. So sit and listen, please. But if you're ready for a story, wiggle your ears, wiggle, 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 wiggle. Our first, uh, uh, our first, uh, uh, hold on. Our, oh, uh, uh, man. Mr. Matt's tired. Last night, we were awoken about two in the morning by what we like to refer to as a trash panda, also known as a raccoon, digging through our trash. So Mr. Matt's a little bit tired this morning. Mr. Matt's a little bit tired in most mornings. So I thought we could do a quiet story time this morning. And what better way to start a very quiet story time than with the Very Quiet Cricket by Eric Carle. Are you ready to read? Let's do it. One warm day from a tiny egg, a little cricket was born. Welcome, chirped a big cricket, rubbing his wings together. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together. But nothing happened. Not a sound. Good morning, whizzed a locust, spinning through the air. The little cricket wanted to answer, so... He rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. Hello, whispered a praying mantis, scraping its huge front legs together. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. Good day, crunched a worm, munching his way out of an apple. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. 
Hi, bubbled a spittlebug, slurping in a sea of froth. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. Good afternoon, shrieked a cicada, clinging to a branch of a tree. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. Ooh, how are you? hummed a bumblebee, flying from flower to flower. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. Good evening, whirred a dragonfly, gliding above the water. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. Good night, buzzed the mosquitoes, dancing among the stars. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. Oh dear. A luna moth sailed quietly through the night, and the cricket enjoyed the stillness. As the luna moth disappeared silently into the distance, the cricket saw another cricket. She too was a very quiet cricket. Then he rubbed his wings together one more time. And this time, he chirped the most beautiful sound that she had ever heard. And that is the end of The Very Quiet Cricket. So just like a lot of our stories recently, the very quiet cricket didn't get it right the first time, or the second time, or the third time, or the sixth time, I think. But he kept on trying, and eventually, he figured it out. He was able to do it. Just like you, when you set your mind to something, and you keep trying, and keep trying, and keep trying, and keep practicing, you will get better, and you will be able to do it. I know you can. Miss Jen here with our daily rhyme. Now it's been raining a lot, right? But the flowers are coming up. So I have a little rhyme for you about gardening. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. I take a little seed. I plant it in the ground. Out comes the sun, big and round. Down comes the rain, soft and slow. Up comes a flower. Grow, grow, grow. Yeah, nice, right? One more time. One, two, three. I take a little seed. I plant it in the ground. Out comes the sun, big and round. Down comes the rain, soft and slow. Up comes the flower. Grow, grow. Hope you have some fun gardening. Thanks, Miss Jen. Oh, sorry. We have time for one more quiet story. And this story is from one of my favorite characters. This story is called Sleepy Bird. I love Bird. It was bedtime, but Bird was not ready to go to sleep. His wings wanted to flap. His legs wanted to run. All of him wanted to play. Wee! said Bird. It's party time! Fox was getting cozy when he heard Bird coming. Goodness, said Fox. That's a lot of noise for bedtime. I'm not tired, said Bird. Maybe if you hugged my blankets, said Fox. It helps me get sleepy. Blanky schmanky, said the Bird. Let's play! Fox was too sleepy to play. So Bird went to find Beaver. It's bedtime, Bird, said Beaver. Bedtime is for babies, said Bird. How about I read you a story, said Beaver. How about you don't, said Bird. He tapped Beaver on the arm. Tag, you're it! Bird ran to Rabbit's house, but Beaver didn't follow. Everybody says it's bedtime, says Bird. But I'm not tired. Want to snuggle my stuffed kitty, asked Rabbit. A stuffed cat, said Bird. Are you trying to give me nightmares? Bird went to find Raccoon. Raccoon, said Bird. You'll play with me, right? It's bedtime, said Raccoon. I'm going to sing a soft lullaby and drift off to sleep. 
but you're nocturnal, said Bird. That means he sleeps during the day. Why won't anyone play? Bird flounced over to Sheep's place. You know what you need, said Sheep. New friends, suggested Bird. You need to count sheep, said Sheep. That always helps me fall asleep. But there's only one of you, shouted Bird. How can you get sleepy counting to one? Bird stormed off. If no one would play with him, he would just walk forever. After a little while, his wings drooped. His legs crumpled. I am not tired, he cried. Why should I go to sleep? Bird's friends heard his cries and came running. That's what a good friend does. Fox covered Bird with his blankie. Beaver read a story. Rabbit tucked his stuffed kitty under Bird's wings. Raccoon sang a quiet song. Sheep counted herself until she got to one more times than she could count. I am not sleepy, mumbled Bird as his eyes closed. Finally, said his friends. I thought he'd never fall asleep, said Fox. They lay down near Bird and slept. Bird rolled over. He opened his eyes. He yawned and stretched. Hiya, chirped Bird. Who wants to play? Oh, Bird, you are such a goofy, goofy bird. And that's the end of Sleepy Bird. And that is all the time that we have for our story time today, boys and girls. I hope you had a good time with our quiet story time, even if that silly bird was not so quiet. Don't forget, Miss Jen will be here for baby story time tomorrow, and we will be back with more stories and activities and a craft on Thursday. And of course, story time live. If you would like to attend the face-to-face -face story time on WebEx, you know what to do. Email me, I will get you all the information you need. And of course, Friday at 11.30, we will do our live story time on Facebook Live. And of course, your challenge, find three things in your house that start with the letter L. Send those to me, to my email address, and I'll be putting those on Thursday story time. <sighs> but until then, boys and girls, stay safe. Stay wonderful. And we'll see you on... Oh,